Well, this is Michael Devlin with the Michael Devlin Group, and this is a short video on how to apply for and get a California real estate license. There are two ways of doing that. We're going to cover both of them. The different ways you could apply in order to get a California real estate license. How long is this going to take? What forms do I need? How much is this going to cost? And how can I speed the process up, if at all? As well as I'm going to show you how to avoid a mistake that might cost you as much as $10,000 once you get your license. If you appreciate the video and like the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so that you'll hear about future videos. Plus, hit that notification button so the next time I release a video, you'll be notified right away. So let's talk about how to apply for the California Real Estate Salesperson's Exam and License and at the same time avoid a potentially very costly mistake. To start with, there are two ways in which you can apply to get a California real estate salesperson's license. Number one, you can simply apply to go take the licensing exam, and then if you pass it, you can go on and apply to get a license. Or the second approach is that you could apply for the exam and the license at the same time. That's called the combo approach. We're going to talk about that later, but it's probably the preferable method. So applying for the exam and then the license, you start by sending in your application with a $60 fee to take the test. Then you also, by the way, when you send in that application, have to submit proof that you've completed the three college level courses required to get a license. And then once you've done that, you mail everything, the fee, your transcripts, all of that to the California Department of Real Estate. They will then eventually, uh, four weeks, five weeks or so, post it on their website and you could get an idea of when you're going to take the test. You could actually take a test. You get an email telling you that they have processed your application. You can now set a test date. And then when you pass the test, you would send them a salesperson's license application, which is form 202. The reason people do this is because they're, well, not sure that they're going to pass the exam and they don't want to pay for the exam and the license at the same time, plus getting their fingerprints done if they're not even sure they're going to pass the exam in the first place. Plus, 60 bucks is less than doing all that other stuff. So they'll pay 60 bucks now, see if they pass the test. If they do, then they'll get their fingerprints taken and they'll do the other things necessary to get a license. So after you pass, right, so you pay them the $60, you go take the state exam, you pass the exam, now they want you, and you have, by the way, one year to do this, to send them your license application and the $245 fee. Also, they want at that time that you do what's called the live scan request, which means fingerprint processing. And then the license is not going to be issued until the Department of Real Estate has received a copy of your fingerprints from the Department of Justice. By the way, that process easily takes six weeks. You get an email once the license has been issued and they will, you can log online and you can print out a certificate of yourself. They also will send you a little card that you can carry with you. You're a card carrying real estate agent. So how long does this process take? So if you're doing this simply where you're going to take the exam only and then apply later, so you do the three college level courses, which will take 54 days if you need all three, let's say roughly eight weeks to do the three college courses. Then you can apply and take the state exam. That's going to take about eight weeks. Those times can, can tend to vary. Then, in order to get your license, you have to do the fingerprint check. It's going to take six weeks for the fingerprint check, and then a couple of more weeks for processing. It could easily be 10 weeks total. When you add all of this together, you're looking at something in the neighborhood of 26 weeks or a little over six months, and that's kind of assuming you're doing it as fast as you can. The other, um, the fees that are associated with this, as I mentioned, are $60 to go take the test. When you pass, they want the $245 for the license, which is $305, and you have one year from passing the exam to send them the $245. If you don't, 
if you go take the test, pay them $60, pass the test, but you don't give them $245 within one year, the Department of Real Estate makes you start over and take the test again. You don't have to do the college level courses again, but you have to take the test again. A really long time ago, there used to be this commercial and one of the lines in the commercial was, some things are better the second time around. This is not one of those things. Now, the other way of doing it is what's called the combo. And in the combo, you're applying to take the state exam and to get your license at the same time. So you would use a different form and you need to answer all the questions. I'm gonna go through the forms with you, but you need to answer all the questions. And then you would submit to the Department of Real Estate, not only the $60 to take the test, but the $245 to get a license, you'd send them $305 right away. You would also send them proof of your college level courses and the fingerprints. So applying for the exam at the license at the end of the same time, you would include the fingerprint processing form. So before you uh, send in the combo application, you would have already gone and gotten your fingerprints taken. And when that happens, whoever does your scan will give you a copy of the form and you would include that copy with your application. Um, you mail everything, and by the way, we mean mail. There's no online way of doing this at this point. The fees, the transcripts, you send it all to the Department of Real Estate and check their website to see how long it'll take you to get a test date. You get an email letting you know that you've been approved, then you can log on to their e-licensing system and it'll show you the test dates for like the next six months. You can pick your test date at that time. After you've passed and assuming there are no other deficiencies, sometimes there are, they'll actually issue your license number at the exam site. So what are the differences between, I'm going to go just take the exam only, I'll get the license later, is that if I pass, they're going to give me a piece of paper that says, congratulations, you passed. Then they're going to send me another form in a little while for me to fill out, and then I can start sending them stuff in order to get a license. Right. If, however, I paid both the $245 for the license and the $60 for the test and done my fingerprints and everything else the Department of Real Estate asks, and then I pass the exam, they can issue me a license number that day, right then and there. I'm legal. I could go sell a house. Um, and again, you print your certificate online. So what is the timeline for the combo? Well, some of it is the same, 54 days for the three college level courses. It's still going to take about eight weeks to get a test date, but during those eight weeks, you'd be doing the fingerprint processing, right? You would, that part would be started. And then when all is good and you pass the, the exam, you get your license right then and there, no weeks to wait. So the total time that it might take could be as low as 16 weeks or four months if you use the combo. Now, the recap, the examination only takes about 20, let's say a little over six months. If you do the combo system, it could take a little over four months. That's well, about a two month difference. So what would happen if during that two months you were able to sell a house? Right now, the value of that would be determined by, well, the value of the property that you're selling. Um, in some of our areas, there are million dollar homes. You get the idea, you could easily be out 10 grand in lost commissions because you were delayed getting into the business by two or more months. That can be an expensive and expensive mistake. All right, let's take a look at the actual application package that you get from the Department of Real Estate and the specific forms. So this is the exam license application checklist, right? If you, this can be downloaded from the Department of Real Estate website, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to send you information, um, a copy of the checklist and all the different forms. I'll provide a link.
Let's start with the actual forms. This is the package that you get from the Department of Real Estate. A link to this package will be down below in the description. And this is RE216B, right? Which is the checklist. And the checklist, well, it's a checklist. And it starts by saying you could use this either for the broker or the salesperson's application. It says you're supposed to read the instructions, which is 435. That's the um, for the salesperson's exam and list your legal name. And then here are the different forms that might be used. Right now, we're only going to be concerned with the salesperson forms. Um, and that's RE 435, which we're going to take a look at. You, in addition to that, you give them your three transcripts, principles, practice, and the elective. You give them the RE 237, which is the fingerprint processing form that is done by a live scan operator, and you, you pay them the fee, right? Um, another video, maybe I'll go over the broker application. But this is the salesperson application. And this is where you can decide, are you doing this simply to take the salesperson's exam or do you want to get the license and the salesperson's exam at the same time? That's the combo. So what you would do is you would click that. If you only wanted to take the salesperson's exam, you would click the other box. But then it only you only want to complete certain items. We're going to do it right and we're going to apply for both the exam and the license. As you can see over on the right, there's the fees would be $305. So they want you to put in your social security number. You um, put in your birth date. You, have you ever applied for a California real estate exam? Now, um, you need to, uh, you need to answer every single question, right? So in the Department of Real Estate's a little bit fussy about all this. So you'd be putting in your birth date. Have you ever applied for a license before? Um, if the answer is no, pick no. If the answer is yes, you have explaining to do. If you don't answer that question, right? If you don't pick either yes or no, what'll happen is the Department of Real Estate will figure that out eventually be putting your application in a different pile, right, um, at, the, at the state. And in a month or two, you're going to get a letter from them asking you to fill out the form. You do not want to miss any of the questions on the form. It'll take months longer to get your license. So you would put in your last name here, your first name there your middle name, and if you have a suffix, put that in. You would be putting in your, oops, where did I do? You'd be putting in your address, the city, state, and zip. Um, then, oops, I know. Uh, do you reside in California? If you pick no, well, they're going to want to know what state you do reside in. There are some states that have residency requirements, and if you're residing in Arizona or Texas, it could be a problem. Let's assume you're a California resident. You need to put in your phone number. Oops. You need to put an email address. Bit quicker. You could put in another phone number and another phone number if you felt like it. The reason you want to make sure you have your correct email address is they'll email you when you're approved to go take the exam. Are you currently serving in the military? Answer the question. If you don't, they'll wait a couple of months and send you the form again. Have you previously served in the military? Answer the question. If yes, were you dishonorably discharged? Um, don't answer it if you didn't answer yes, right? Don't say no or yes. If it says if, if yes in 12a, then you answer that. 
do you now hold or have you ever held a real estate license? If the answer is no, say no. If the answer is yes, then you would fill out the part underneath it where you would be putting in the type of license, the ID number and other information. I'm assuming most of you won't have that. Now, paragraph 14 is one to pay a little bit of attention, even though there doesn't seem to be a lot there. The question that paragraph 14 is asking is, once the Department of Real Estate has approved you to go take the test, do you want them to notify you and let you pick the day and time you're taking the test and the location, or do you want them to pick for you? Now, most people would rather pick themselves. So click yes. Now that means they're gonna notify by email when you're qualified. If you pick yes, don't fill out paragraph 15. Don't say Sacramento or Oakland, don't say time for, don't put in a, don't do anything. Because you only fill out paragraph 14 is if you pick no, right? So if you pick no, then you could say, I wanna tell you in Sacramento, and I want to take it in the morning, and the first day I get to take it is this date, right? That doesn't necessarily work so well. By picking yes on paragraph 14, they'll send you an email, you log into their system, shows you all the tests available at all the different centers. There might be one coming up sooner. You can pick the one you want. If you have, re if you need accommodations, that sort of thing for taking the test, um, handicapped, other, other physical disabilities, you'd be checking that box. Obviously, you don't write in where it says DRE use. Be sure to write your name up here, right? The, again, the Department of Real Estate wants to see everything filled out. Have you used other names, a maiden name, a, foreign mar a former married name? Have you, they want to make sure you haven't been arrested under these other names. If the answer is yes, then you list the names. If the answer is no, well, you pick no. By the way, if you don't pick anything, if you don't say yes or no, the Department of Real Estate will wait a couple of months, then write you a letter and send you the form back to, to fill it out. Don't miss any. Pick gender. If you fail to pick gender, they'll wait a couple of months, send you the application back, and ask you to check the appropriate box. Now we come to paragraph 20. There are two ways in which you can get a, a license. One is a working license, and the other one is a non-working license. Now, to get a working license, that means you need to be sponsored by a broker at the time you send in your application. So if you pick yes, that you're gonna be sponsored by a broker, now all of this information down here about the broker ID and the expiration date and the phone number and who is the broker and the office of the broker and the certification of the broker and the original signature, the Department of Real Estate doesn't like electronic signatures and the name of the broker. Now, getting all of that could take a little while. Right, sometimes you have to get the broker to actually sign it in person. If, however, you pick no. Now, even if you're planning on working with a broker, even if it's me, right, and you want to get your license issued as quickly as possible, if you pick no and say, I do not have a responsible broker at this time, please issue my license in a non-working status, then you don't have to complete all these other boxes and your license is issued quicker. Now that I have a license or you have your license because they've issued it, you can log into the e-licensing section of the Department of Real Estate and add an employer, add the broker. And if the broker is available in almost real time, I mean, literally within minutes, your license can be activated with a broker. It's done online. It only takes a few minutes to do. We have instructions on how to fill that out. That might be another video. But if you pick no, license is issued quicker. Don't have to take the time to get all this filled out and signed. Remember, it requires an actual pre a real signature. Um, your license is issued quicker. Now we come to background information. I made a video on the what are the what what if you have a DUI? What if you have a criminal history of any kind? The Department of Real Estate is not asking the questions that they used to ask about that. Um, watch my video and you'll find out why. But these are the questions they do want you to answer. 
Have you ever had a license suspended, restricted, or revoked? Business, professional, including real estate in California, um, let's say the answer is no. If yes, they want to hear about it. Are there any disciplinary actions pending against you or any business license you have? Let's assume it's no. Have you ever been registered as a sex offender? Let's say it's no. Have you ever been ordered to cease and desist from uh, because of an unprofessional conduct? Let's say the answer is no. Now, if you've answered no, 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 do not write anything down here. I've had people that because they were they had a DUI a long time ago and they felt compelled to type out the story and that it was expunged and they really feel bad and all, you know do all that don't do that right because if you start writing things like that you'll just get the department of real estate all excited and they're going to want to know more so only if you answered yes to these questions do you fill out paragraph 32 or 33. again you need to put your name at the top of the form um, and then the rest of this is your certification that says that you've met the requirements, you haven't been cheating, all that sort of stuff. You date this, you sign it, and again, it's a wet signature, it's a real signature, and you send it to the Department of Real Estate. Now, you might be thinking, well, where do I send it? Well, part of the package includes an explanation of this process. Um, not as good as the one I just gave, but it's an explanation of the process. It gives you information about scheduling. It um, gives you all of that sort of stuff. It explains the fingerprint requirements, the education requirements. There's the note about out-of-state applicants to see, you know, if they like your state or not. And if you keep going, you're going to see that there's a section, where do you mail it, right? It says here to the Department of Real Estate. How do you make out a, a check, right? Who do you, you know, there's a credit card form you have to write out. This is really old school. Write out your, you know, your number on a form and your credit card number and send it to them or a check. Uh, if you send them a money order, you need to understand that sometimes the Department of Real Estate messes up or they think you did and they will send you back your check. Um, if it's a cashier's check or a money order, when they send it back, um, it may be hard for you to cash it. Um, you can send them a, the reason people do cashier's checks and money orders, because they figure they'll process it right away. They'll deposit the check right away too. And it takes so long for their process to work. Even a personal check has plenty of time to, to, to clear, or you could use a credit card. Um, veterans expedited an explanation of the fees, that sort of thing. Um, then we come to the live scan form, which is part of the process. So in the previous versions of the form, it used to say that you're not supposed to do this until you f finish the three college level courses. It doesn't say that anymore. Now, the fingerprint processing is going to take probably six weeks. So while you're, remember, it's going to take them a long time. I'll put it this way. Let's say you're on your third college level course, right? You've taken principles, you've taken practice, you're finishing the third course, your final exam is coming up, you're getting ready to apply to take the test. Go ahead and get the live scan, get your fingerprints done. Where would you do it? Well, I'll have a link to that as well in the description, but postal annexes, UPS stores, and a couple of thousand other places will do the fingerprint scan. They are all, many of them are on Saturdays, they're open in some evenings. Um, it's not a difficult thing to do. Um, and there's a list and they're, they're all over the place. So you would fill out part two, your information. Again, don't leave out anything. Most of this is hopefully questions you can answer easily. Uh, height and weight and eye color, hair color, place of birth, social security, driver's license number, residence address, and OCA, don't worry about that if you've got a social security number. And then you print this form out, right? You type it out, print it out, and you go to UPS store, postal annex, or wherever you're going to get your fingerprints taken. Um, you sign it with them, give it to them. They roll your fingerprints. 
they take the form, they scan your form as well, they upload everything to the Department of Justice and they give you a copy of this form back, which they've signed. That copy is something, they give you two copies. One of those two copies you're supposed to include with your application packet to take the exam and get a license. The other one is for your records. I've had people ask me, what should I do with it? I said, frame it, I don't know, right? Um, there, isn't a lot, uh, there isn't a lot to do with it. So that explains that. And then there's instructions about the fingerprint requirements. Again, let me just say, it's going to take six weeks. There's a processing fee of $49 to process the fingerprints. And then there's going to be a fee charge, it's called the rolling fee, just to have the fingerprints taken. Typically, people are spending $75 to $80 for the processing fee and to have their fingerprints taken, that's just about, it's, it's roughly that amount. Um, other places you can do it, notice they have a link where there are a lot of places where you can get your fingerprints taken. I'll have some links in the bottom of, uh, in the description as well. And in case you have insomnia, they've, they've decided to include the privacy notice as, as required by the civil code, and you can read that, and it tells you what they're gonna do with all your files. And then there's a demographic study, which you can choose to fill out or not. Um, they would like to know if you want to answer their questions or tell them, you know, I don't wanna answer your questions. And now you have completed the package in order to get a real estate license. If you have any questions, any problems, uh, leave me a comment. If you have any ideas of other videos you'd like me to, to make to, to help you get your license, put that in the comments as well. If you like the video, hit like. Um, subscribe to the channel, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, hit that notification bell so that the next time I have a video, you'll be notified. You don't have to worry about Google letting you know. Um, it'll just be there for you.